Okay, now we're going to move on to kicking techniques or leg techniques as I like to refer to them as since there's more than just kicks in Okinawan Karate. These are traditionally called Geri Waza, which Geri means kick. Uh, first one that we're going to cover is a basic front kick. I like to teach all these out of fighting stance. Uh, I know that there's lots of other ways to do them, but since we're self-defense oriented in my dojo, everything's done out of our fighting posture. The front kick, the very first basic one, front snap kick. Most importantly, when you do this kick, there's a little bit of a snap with the hip to extend and recoil the kick. You don't want to point your foot, you want to pull your toes back, striking with the ball of the foot. Staying on balance is also highly important in all of our kicks. You want to keep your heel down on the ground. I know that a lot of people like to strike very high and they get up on the ball of the foot when they're doing so, but that generates 50% of your power here, 50% there, if you understand anything about the laws of physics. Executing the front kick. When you're executing the front kick, and I'll do most of these from the side posture position, you need to turn forward towards your target. So if I was fighting him, regardless of what stance I'm in, my body is going to turn forward as I go to throw the kick. So I'm here as such, I'm going to turn forward, I'm going to bring my heel tightly up to my body. That's very important. You don't want to be like this. You want to bring it tight. Tight, snap out, heel back, set down. Maintain that balance through the whole kick. Your target areas could be anywhere from the groin all the way up to the throat, even to the chin. Uh, if we were full contact fighting, we would get them up underneath the chin if we were lucky. We missed 90% of the kicks to the head, just so you know. So I always tell my students, always focus on a good solar plexus kick, groin kick, you know, something solid. The side kick. The side kick is probably the most powerful, but it's not the fastest kick and requires a lot of skill to apply. Uh, there are big differences in the chamber with the side kick and the roundhouse kick, which is where most people go wrong on this particular kick. The foot position is going to be bladed, so your toes are going to be curled back up to you, hitting with the edge of the foot. You don't want to be flat-footed because your ankle can roll. By blading, you're maximizing your impact area. The side kick chamber, the foot, actually, if this was my intended target, my knee comes in front of me. Okay, roundhouse kick, side kick. Very important. The tighter the chamber, the higher and more powerful the extension. As always, keep your hands in too when you kick. So when you're executing the side kick, your target would be here. You notice I reposition my hip, so my hip and my shoulder line up, so I can kick right out where that is at. So I want to be here, chamber tightly with my knee to the front of my body, extend to the side, pull my knee back, set now. It's like a hammer jack or a piston. It goes straight in, straight back, straight in, straight back. So when I'm kicking, I kick out and pull back. Very important when you're doing that particular kick. The roundhouse kick. Roundhouse kick is like a boxer's jab with a hand, is the easiest way to put it. It strikes with the top of the foot or the shin, depending on your level of expertise. Most importantly, when you do this kick, you got to recoil it. A lot of people kick and drop their leg, thus creating a chance for us to catch it, sweep you, take you down, and hit you. The roundhouse kick, the knee points at the target. So if I wanted to kick the ribs of the person, I would point the knee at the ribs and hit there. If I want to kick him in the head, same thing. The knee has to point at the target. The position of the kick, hips are sideways, knee points out, extend and snap and pull back. Very important that you get a nice snap on that kick. A powerful kick with this is to throw the hip in when you do it. And I can't hit this real hard because it's going to go flying because it doesn't have a lot of water in it. So when you're kicking, strike and hit hard. Strike and hit hard. The roundhouse kick is highly, highly effective. Back kicking. Back kicking is in case you see somebody running at you. I'm walking along. I happen to notice somebody coming in from behind. I kick as fast as I can. I don't want to throw the kick and leave my leg out there. I also don't want to turn and side kick and turn back around. Just bring it up, kick behind you. Kick behind you. Like I said, I can't hit them hard. So when you're doing this kick, I can be talking to somebody. I see their eyes get really big. I look over my shoulder, boom, blast them with that kick. It's ribs and lower. Don't kick any higher than that. These are primary basic kicks. We're going to get into the more harder kicks, more advanced kicks here in a second. Okay, 
Next up are what I call the arcing kicks or hooking kicks. They're angular, circular kicks. They're not straightforward like the front kick, the side kick, and the roundhouse kick. These actually have an arc to them. Uh, there's an inside-outside crescent kick, and there's also a hook kick and a wheel kick. These are the primary ones. The inside crescent kick is pretty powerful. The outside crescent kick, not so much. But they're good for striking external limbs or sweeping into the side of the leg or the knee. Uh, most of the time, if you see somebody executing inside crescent kick, it's actually more of a sweep to the leg than it is a strike high. Uh, the way that I teach the crescent kicks, I don't, we don't actually use Bob when we do this, but the crescent kicks are done from the inside to the outside. I'll use him as a target here in a second. Executing the inside crescent kick, it's always going to be done with the reverse leg, and I have my students put their hand out as their target area so that they can pick their leg up, strike in, and set it down. Don't swing the leg through because that is basically relying on muscle to get through. We want to work on technique. The technique of the kick is it comes out and it strikes through. So you kick the strike through when you're doing it. If we're performing pasadikata, my hand's here. When I throw this kick, I'm going to slam it into that technique. Very, very important. Okay. Outside pressing. We always use the lead leg on this. You can use the back one, but it's, it takes longer to get the kick off. The lead leg crescent, I'm going to go up this shoulder, across this shoulder, and down. I'm not going to do a big, wide arcing motion because that leaves me completely exposed to getting hit. So I'm focused on fighting the person. I'm going to step up, swing my leg out and down. A nice, quick, fast motion. If I was fighting with this guy and I was using the inside crescent, See, maybe he's got his hands down or something's out there. That rib cage is open. I drive it into the ribs. Outside crescent might take his lead guard down so I can set up for a secondary technique. I might even get lucky to be able to hit around the side of the face with that kick as well. The hook kick. The hook kick is a unique kick. It requires a lot of flexibility to become good with it, number one. And it requires it to hook out and around. So if this is my opponent's hand, their guard right here, my kick actually has to hook out and around and come down. I don't do this and throw my body all over the place. The power from the kick comes from that snap into the side of the jaw. So if I'm fighting this guy, hook him back down. Very important. It looks like a side kick from the chamber. And then it extends and comes back down as far as that goes. Wheel kick's like a baseball bat. You just throw the leg as hard and fast as you can, focusing on hitting with the heel. So you step and swing through as hard and as fast as you can. Swing through as hard and as fast as you can. These are the primary arcing kicks. There are more kicks, but these are the basic ones in terms of arcing and kiyomwaza. Okay, expanding from the basic kicks, we've got a front thrust kick, a side thrust kick, and axe kick kick and a toe kick that we're going to go over next as well as a stomping kick. The difference between the front kick and side kick we've already known is those were snap kicks. They're designed to break bones. The thrust kicks are designed more to shove somebody or knock somebody far away from you. So what we've done so far like about our front kick is you bring it up, you snap it in, you pull it back. The thrust kick comes higher and pushes out. So you're more or less driving your heels through the person. The side kick is the same thing. You snap out and back. Thrust kick comes up and you push and extend, pushing the person away. Exact same kick, just a different way of doing it. Axe kick. Axe kick is one of those kicks that's questionable on whether it's effective, but if you get somebody you're fighting with them and say you pop them and they're kind of dizzy because they got hit really good, an axe kick is highly effective. Uh, you cannot do axe kicks on heavy bags and things because it puts unnecessary misuse of the meniscus, the ACL, and the MCL. So you actually use the heavy bag as a target. So you don't hit it. An axe kick will come up and prop straight down on the person. So when I'm fighting with somebody, pop, pop, whatever I'm doing for my lean-in technique, my kick comes up like a crescent kick and it drops on them. So up and down on top of them. Uh, we don't use a lot of axe kicks except when we do kumite, and typically it's kind of a combination of a crescent kick and an axe kick, to be honest with you. The stomp kick. Stomp kick is executed just like a side kick, however, it's a technique that would, you would use to strike somebody's knee or strike somebody if they fell on the ground if you were in a fight with them. So the kick will actually come up and stomp down in. See how the foot's still bladed, hitting with the blade of the foot? 
So say this was his knee right there, I would probably be fighting with the match right on the knee. So I stomp through, pushing through the target. I don't go here like a snap. I would go through the target. Through the target. Uh, soft kicks can be very dangerous and very deadly if they are applied to certain areas of the body. So please be careful with those. Toe kicking. A toe kicking is like a front kick, except you're curling the toes. So I'm striking pressure point areas with the tip of the toe, throat, et cetera, et cetera. It takes a lot of years to get very, very highly accurate with that. The toes point like you're doing a ballet, I guess is the easiest way to put it. And it's more of a thrust than it is a snap. I wouldn't do this, I would thrust it in back, okay? Uh, please condition your toes with the exercises that we teach you in the dojo before trying to toe kick on your own. Okay, like I said earlier, there's a lot more than just kicking when it comes to perfecting Gedwazi or what I call leg techniques. There are knees. We have a front knee, a side strike knee, a drop knee. Uh, knees can be applied in all different kinds of methods. The best way to practice a knee is to strike the target coming at it. So when I'm practicing and I'm teaching in the dojo, we'll do a front knee and I'll have my students act like they grabbed and hold somebody's hair and drive it down through their knee. We'll talk about power in a second. Same thing with the side knee. Act like you're grafting and driving in when you're hitting something. Power in the knee. The knee has to go up and down. Up and down hard and fast to be effective. If I just grab somebody and I bend over and I hit them like that, there's no power there. The knee will be highly effective. Not to mention, they're probably going to grab your leg and sweep you and take you down. So if I'm fighting with this guy and get a grappling situation, I want my knee to go up and down fast drive it in. I don't want to be like, hmm. okay. So I'm here, up and down, very important. Same thing with the side. Get in and Get in and out. It's going to get knocked over. There's not a lot of water in there. The drop knee would be useful if I was grappling with somebody or got in a fight and falls to the ground. I drop my knee into his groin or into his rib cage or into the side of his jaw when he's on the ground. You just drop the knee. Be very careful with the drop knee. Because if you miss, you'll be driving in the pavement or whatever the ground is like, and it can cause damage to your knee as well. Spin kicks. Take any one of the basic karate techniques that we've already covered and add a spin to it. It's as simple as that. I'm going to give you some pointers what makes a spinning kick extremely, extremely effective. First thing you guys need to understand about your spinning kicks, if you can't see it, you can't hit it. I'm going to say that again. If you can't see it, you can't hit it. So we're going to look at the back kick, the spinning back kick, okay? This is our back kick, strike and back down. So if I'm here, I evade my opponent, I look over my shoulder, notice my heel's pointing, and then I shoot my kick out. I don't want to do this wild swinging thing with this particular kick because it will lead up to me being exposed and being able to get hit. So I'm here, point and look, kick, pull that leg back fast, very important. Hook kick. Same thing, you gotta be able to see what you're hitting. This is our regular hook kick. Fight with the hook and back down. Spinning hook kick, same thing. Turn, rotate, hook, and set it down. No over rotation. Everybody I see does this, and they swing all the way through. That is a wheel kick. Spinning hook kick does not over rotate because I don't want to leave myself exposed. Very simple. Flying side kick. Don't really have enough room in the video, but I can tell you when you do that kick, your bottom leg should be tucked, that one should be extended out, and the hand should be in when you're hitting it. Just to give you an idea, I'll try just a simple basic one. This is a lead up kick. Launch off of your non kicking leg, spin the hip, kick, and back down. One more time, eyes on target, and back down, tucking that bottom leg. Uh, there's more to that kick, and it is a very hard kick to master. Okay? Jumping fake front kick, or what I call a swallow kick or crane kick. It's not done like the karate kid, no matter how much you love the karate kid. Okay, you can't do that. This kick is more like you're checking their leg, they're backing away, and you're pound, pound, pound that other leg into them. It covers distance too. So if I'm here and I kick, I'm covering distance with it. Uh, for those of you that practice the Kalakusanku dive, it's a little bit different because it's more of a floating kick. 
So when we're here, we got that hold down. Actually, I switched my legs. We're here and pull down. You're going to actually float a little bit. So I'm going to go and get both legs down on the ground as fast as possible. Like the basic techniques to spinning, anything that you do can have a jump to it. Add a jump spinning side kick, jump spinning hook kick, jump spinning crescent kick, uh, jump fake roundhouse kick. There's lots of uh, different combinations of doing this. It's just up to you to practice. But if your Kihong techniques, your basic fundamental kicks are not good, your advanced kicking, your spin kicking, your jump kicking, and your aerial kicking will never be good. Work the basics. If you're ever in a street fight situation, a self-defense situation, they're what's going to save you. Front kick, side kick, ground kick. Front kick, side kick, ground kick. Three primary go-to weapons. Get good with them. Get effective with them. Get accurate with them. These are just some of the basic ways of kicking and knee, as far as that goes. Called Gedi Waza. Gedi meaning leg or kick. Uh, when you get back to the dojo after this quarantine, things all done, said and done, if you saw something here you want to work on, make sure you let me know. Make sure you're sensing, hey, we're back in the dojo. Can we get a partner and do some drills? Can we learn how to apply this in sparring? You know, that's the whole reason why I'm making these videos is to put a lot of information out there so you can keep going back to it and keep reviewing it and keep practicing at home. Uh, I believe in my heart and with, the, with God's blessing, this will not last very long. So I, I really, really, truly hope so because I miss you guys. I'll talk to you guys here pretty soon.